spotted China's Fujian supercarrier in action. The Fujian is more than just China's third aircraft carrier, it's a technological milestone that marks a major step forward in naval design. Built at the Jiangnan Shipyard in Shanghai, this ship weighs around 80,000 tons, making it the largest vessel of its kind ever built by an Asian nation. That size is impressive, but it's the technology inside that really sets it apart. For the first time, China has equipped a carrier with an Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMAILS. This technology, previously seen only on the United States Navy's Gerald R. Ford-class carriers, replaces older steam catapults and ski jump ramps. Instead of relying on mechanical pressure or angled decks, Emails uses electromagnetic force to launch planes smoothly and efficiently. The benefit? Heavier aircraft such as fixed-wing early warning planes, stealth fighters and surveillance aircraft can take off from the Fujian's flat deck. That change transforms what the carrier can do. Early warning planes extend radar coverage far beyond the horizon, while stealth fighters can operate at longer ranges with full fuel and payload. Even drones can be launched using the same system. Analysts have highlighted that emails provides more precise control over launches, reduces stress on aircraft, and increases the number of flights a carrier can support each day. After completing three months of maintenance, the Fujian recently left its dock at Jiangnan Shipyard, and its next steps have been closely watched around the world. Photos shared on social media showed the massive ship starting its engines and departing slowly, while soon after, European Space Agency Sentinel-2 satellites captured images of the Fujian moving southward in the East China Sea. The sighting confirmed that the carrier was sailing toward the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea, regions that are among the busiest maritime routes on the planet. Japan's Ministry of Defense also confirmed spotting the Fujian near the Senkaku Islands, which are known as the Diaoyu Islands in China. It wasn't traveling alone, two advanced destroyers, the Hangzhou and the Jinan, were sailing ahead as escorts. Interestingly, Japan's released images showed no aircraft or helicopters on the Fujian's deck, which suggests this round of trials was focused on propulsion, navigation, and integration with supporting ships, rather than aviation operations. China's Navy spokesperson, Senior Captain Leng Guawei, later explained that the ship was engaged in a mission of scientific research, testing, and training. That wording may sound routine, but the significance lies in the fact that the Fujian is now operating in real-world environments rather than being limited to controlled testing zones. Since its launch in June 2022, the Fujian has already completed at least eight sea trials, each testing different systems. By sailing through such complex waters, engineers and planners can evaluate the carrier's endurance, stability and coordination with other vessels under conditions it will face in active service. The Fujian's entry into service, expected by late 2025, has the potential to reshape how carrier fleets operate in the Asia-Pacific region. While China already has the largest navy in the world by hull numbers, with over 370 active ships and submarines, this ship is different because it adds a new level of capability. Unlike its predecessors, the Liaoning and Shandong, which relied on ski jump ramps, the Fujian's email system enables a much wider range of aircraft operations bringing China's fleet closer to the standard set by the United States Navy. This means China can rotate three carriers, one in service, one preparing and one in maintenance, creating a more consistent maritime presence. That cycle mirrors how established navies maximize their fleets, ensuring at least one carrier is ready at sea at almost any given time. In June 2025, China even demonstrated that it could operate two carriers together in the Western Pacific. Once the Fujian is commissioned, the possibility of triple carrier activities emerges, something only the most advanced navies in history have attempted. These coordinated operations could support larger training missions, humanitarian responses or long-distance deployments. Another point of significance is that the Fujian is entirely domestically designed and built, unlike the Liaoning, which was purchased and refitted, or the Shandong, which was based on older blueprints. This shows that China's shipbuilding sector has reached a point where it can independently create world-class naval platforms from the ground up. For regional observers, this ship isn't just about numbers, it represents prestige, technological confidence, and the ability to project maritime presence more effectively. The Fujian is not only a carrier, 
it is the centerpiece of a broader effort to modernize and sustain a long-term naval strategy. The Fujian is more than a new ship. It's a defining moment in naval development. At 80,000 tons with advanced electromagnetic catapults, it introduces capabilities no Asian-built vessel has ever carried before. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support keeps our journey going.